So my mom, she's been married three times. She just goes from boyfriend to boyfriend. She likes to spend time with my two-year-old, which is which is great. But the boyfriend is always around in some way. Either he lives there or nope. she has to do something. Nope. I'll solve that one for you. Answer's no. Good morning, wherever you happen to be. This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. I guess I should said good morning to you, good morning to your family. And I hope you're doing well wherever you happen to be. I conflated those two. My wife often says, John, it's a lot of pronouns. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You combine sentences. And I think I just did that there. So, quick slap it up, flip it, reverse it. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope your family's well. I hope your mental health is well. I hope your relationships are well. And if they're not, that's what we are here for. To walk alongside you and help figure out what the next right crooked thing to do is. Let's go right to the phones. Let's go to Maria in Tampa. What's up, Maria? Hi. How we doing? I am just so excited and very, very grateful. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you so much for your time. No, I'm good grief. I'm so grateful for you. You're too kind. So what's up? Okay, I am super displeased with the way that I am managing my disordered eating and maintaining my sobriety. Hmm. Walk me through it. Tell me more. So in the process of trying to frame up my question neatly, which is kind of difficult. I was going to say, disordered eating and addiction are never never, uh, summed up neatly. So give me the whole messy mess. Okay, so I, first of all, am a mom. I have three kids, five and under, so I am in just the best season of life. <laughs> um, this is true. I am not being sarcastic. Okay. Uh, hey, um, okay, so I have racing thoughts. Mm-hmm. It feels like multiple trains of thoughts zipping by in different directions, super fast, super loud, all the time in my head, and it all seems very urgent, like needs to be thought of right now, past, present, future to-do list, shame, all of it at one time, yep. all the time. And I don't know how to step out of that, turn it down, dismiss the thoughts. Um, I also, uh, like I never, I had a really chaotic childhood. And yep. so like the binge purge thing made a lot of sense for a while for me because it just was like a semblance of control in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how to take care of myself is what it comes mm-hmm. down to. Like I I do not know how to relax so that I might enjoy my body and my brain. Um, and I'm just like, I'm not having a good time and I'm going to be bold and say, I deserve to be having a good time because <laughs> this, is, this is literally exactly the life that I've always wanted. And I find myself constantly dysregulated, yeah. angry, agitated, short tempered, and therefore everyone around me experiences that too. Yep. God, you may, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I, don't, I got more, but <laughs> no, I know you do. Um, you're just incredible. Let me just say that outright. And not enough people tell you that. And I'm grateful that you, you have an ability to, you've been to counseling before. Yes. Okay. In attempts to overcome what was just like a lot of disconnection. There you go. My mom put me in, in treatment patients like five times and it never for worked eating because it wasn't the problem. I also was suicidal. Okay. Like I just needed like a hug, I think. Yeah. And nobody knew that or like understood that. Right. And so after um, I moved out and like started living my life with my like now husband, I realized I have a level of responsibility to cultivate my mind and my body and my lifestyle. And so I am super informed, but I have, it is extremely difficult for me to apply Mm -hmm. any of the nerd things that I know a lot about. And I am so frustrated. I'm so, and and I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. And so I'm like super full of shame and guilt, like all the time. Yeah. Um, okay. The reason I asked if you've been in counseling was you have a, you're years down the road towards being well. And I know you don't realize that your ability to see from an elevated position, both what's going on and your putting some distance between your response to what's going on and your ability to point at, all right, here's where it is. And I don't, I don't, 
I see, I, I hear the, the engine knocking right here, right? Your ability to do that is light years ahead of most people I talk to. Good for you. Like, I, do, I, I want you to know the work you've put in has not been wasted, okay? Um, the word that keeps coming to mind as you're talking is a, it's a scary word, okay? Um, for a couple of different reasons, but the word that keeps coming to mind is exhaustion. Dude, I have a four-month-old and a two-year-old <laughs> and a five-year-old and I, they're all in my bed and... <laughs> uh-huh. and And more than that, um, your body's been in fight or flight for about 30 years, right? Yeah, yeah. And so there's a point when you keep adding in the quote-unquote right things. I crossed the finish line. I got the life I wanted. You overcame so many odds to get where you're, to, to achieve what you've achieved and to cross the finish lines you've crossed. Can we recognize that? It's incredible. You for saying that the 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 professionals who were around you when you were fourteen would have looked at just an actuarial table and said, "This is probably not likely where you've landed." And it's a really? testament to strength and grit. And you've probably got chewed off, broken fingernails because you scratched and clawed your way to this point. You had a picture in your head, and you will achieve this. Is, am I right? Correct. And you found a guy. Tell me about him. Is he awesome? He is awesome, equally uh, crazy, but we have just, we found each other uh, like super young and have been together ever since. We've been together for 10 years and we, you know, like on paper, I've done everything the right way. Like we dated for a few years and we were married for a year and then we started having babies Mm -hmm. and we're starting our own company and I mean, lots of really great things, but um, he also did not receive, I mean, I guess just proper instruction for living (laughs) love and just like basic things. Yeah. So we're just figuring it out together and we kind of take turns being the like, I don't know, more stable one, more mature one. Okay. So so just just grow together. So you've done all the right stuff. The one giant glaring omission that I think is the hardest thing to do is you have not made peace with Maria and you have run from what Maria was. You've run from the hell that was your childhood and you say chaotic. I'm calling BS on that. You've had some, you've seen some stuff. Fair. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you, you haven't made peace with Maria. And because you haven't made peace, and and I'm like, I'm at you, right? Imagine me and you having chips and salsa, right? And uh, like, you know what I mean? I don't know if you're sober, but we're having a drink, we're hanging out, okay? And your husband's hanging out and we're just chilling. So I'm not, I'm not getting on to you. I'm just telling you, until you let Maria go, Maria, nine years old, Maria, 14 years old, Maria, four is still fighting on your behalf, because there's still a mom that no matter what the hell you do, you cannot make her get off your back. And then she tries to solve it by sending you away from her, right? Am I on to it? You still there? Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're so right. She just, like, it feels bad because I know. Nope, 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 don't, don't, don't like, defend her. No, she's right. a, no excuses. Yeah, no she's defense. a grown-up. She's a grown-up. You don't have to she's defend her right up. now. Yep. She didn't know, though. That's okay. That's and, okay. But it doesn't minimize the hurt, right? So true. Yeah, no, it still hurts. What about dad? Where was dad? Well, they got a divorce when I was three. They co-parent. No, not well. We saw him about every other weekend. Okay. And then, um, cause my brother and I are close in age. And then, uh, when I was probably 12, my brother moved out to live with him mm-hmm. and I pretty much stopped all contact. Like he stopped talking to me. I stopped talking to him. We never saw each other until I had my first kid. And that was like five years ago. So it's never. And there's a three to 12 year old Maria. Continuing to, continuing to ask herself, what could I have done differently to keep this thing together? How could I have acted a little bit different so that dad would come around a little bit more? And then they took your lifeline away, which is your brother. Mm-hmm. And then at 12 years old, you found yourself responsible for mom's emotional stability. Fair? 
If I say this, mom flies off the handle. So I need to make sure that I don't say this. I don't eat this. I don't do this. I need to clamp down on everything I can control because if I don't, mom fill in the blank. Fair? Yeah. That's an exhausted nine-year-old little girl. And so running from, and, and again, can I tell you, I do, my, my family situation is different, but the sprinting, and I recognize this in the mirror, okay? So I feel like I'm talking to myself here. I sprinted so hard to show with my income and my job title and the university I worked for and my two healthy little kids and my pretty wife that I could get all of the stuff. And my body was still swinging and kicking and running and hiding as it had been since I was little, little, little. And so the work now is less perfection. And it, 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 this stuff gets more sophisticated. And so as you, have you started, have you started binging again? Um, I binge, I find that it's like, yes, but okay. not as frequently by any means, but it's like when I'm particularly tired, yep. particularly frustrated, um, like I am just in the middle of all of these kids and everybody's screaming and instead of screaming or like wanting to drink, I might just go eat a whole box of Nutty Bars and pop tries and a bag of semi, uh, <laughs> semi gummy, sour gummy worms. Oh my gosh. You just, you just yeah. said all my things. <laughs> yes. They are my favorite and, and I can't have them in the house because it's like, what nope. is self-control? Is that a thing? Listen, I was, I was on the phone with my doctor again this weekend, Dr. Vickery. I think he's one of the greatest doctors in the United States of America. And he told me, as a reminder, he saw my blood work, and I've got it out of the house for X number of months now. And he said, I have never, like, I, my triglycerides have dropped, my, my, all sorts of metrics. I don't want to geek out. But he said, as a reminder, you can't have these in your house based on your genetic profile. Right? So, but let's back out. So, yes, you're right. It just is, and it stinks, and I hate it. And it's, that's, the, that's the cards we've been dealt, right? Um, some people look like Brad Pitt. Some people look like me, right? And that's just the cards I got dealt. And so I just have to know. Um, but let's back out for a second. Can we get real graphic? Is that cool? Yeah, please. Like all the, yes. When you throw up and your stomach rolls, it's rolling over that hill. And you get to the point where it starts taking on, it starts doing it itself and your mm-hmm. core tightens up a lot and then it relaxes and it tightens up, relaxes and your tears come because just because it's your body working so hard. There is a complete and total when that's over, right? A release. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. That's your body. <laughs> That's your head and your mind trying to find ways that it can go whoosh. Like, why not just go take a walk? Like, how come I cannot? Like, I am because your a body is smart at war. person. Maria, but Maria, I cannot. your body's at war. Your body's at war. And as, when's, what age were you when the first time, well, I won't pre, I'm pretty sure I'm right. What was the age somebody hurt you? I cannot remember. Okay. Before 12 or after 12 or both? Before and after, but I subjected myself nah, to it after as a teenager. Nope. But nope. 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 Yeah, if I would have just said those words to my own kid, like that would have been the most messed up thing. Like I, I did not subject myself to anything as nope. a kid. I was taken advantage of and That's not right. supervised. That's right. And. You're continuing to, t- continuing to tell 14-year-old Maria, 17-year-old Maria, who was desperate for someone to look at her and say, you're worthy, even for 30 minutes. Yeah. You're desperate for somebody to say, no, you're worth, you're worth being around. On my terms, but you're worth being around. Right? Do you see what I'm saying? Here's what I'm, trying yeah. to, I'm just trying to draw a thread here no. to no. an incredible mother. And a woman of strength, you have no idea how strong you are. The amount of energy you and your body put forth every day to hold back the tsunami is something that most of us walking through life have absolutely no idea. And the greatest gift you can give yourself is to put your arms down and let the water run. 
because it'll drain out. And your body will know sleep and your body will know intentionality. And then you'll have actual, you'll have strength for willpower. And this is all neuroscience. This isn't just like woo woo, like. No, but like how? <laughs> like, like literally what do I do to do that? I am. You, you, here's what you got to do. You've got to go enter into a therapeutic relationship with somebody with one goal in mind, not to stop a behavior, but to make peace with Maria. Keep these words in your mind. You have to let that little girl go play. And right now she's fighting off an uncle. She's fighting off your brother's friends. She's fighting off high school. She's fighting off mom. She's fighting off dad. What was it about me? Why'd y'all take my brother from me? And then all of the decisions that you make, right? The, 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 the band-aids that we use drink this, sleep with him, do this, snort that. All of those things are a brain saying, somebody freaking connect with me. And now you're a mother with a beautiful family. By the way, you're in the middle of a blender. You know that, right? Yeah, and that's like, I want to enjoy it. I know. And I want them to enjoy it. And your brain's get, got increasingly sophisticated modes of trying to take care of you. When you were a kid, it was behavior A and action B and action C. Now your brain is going to just run and run and run and run, trying to get your attention. And occasionally it will build up and build up and build up like an itch you can't scratch until you just eat everything and then throw up and get that complete and utter whoosh. And then you can start building it back up again. Mm -hmm. You have to, have to, have to do two things. You got to go get into, into a therapeutic relationship. You got to call somebody, okay? And let them know, I've built it back. I'm, I'll am storm the gates of hell with my strength. I'm strong. And I'm ready to heal. And the second thing you're going to have to do, which my guess is you don't have, is you're going to have to get a couple of women in your life that you trust that become your friends. Have you ever done that? No. <laughs> My guess is you are lonely, lonely, lonely. And you have the picture yeah. of everything that looks good, but your body is screaming, where are my friends? Yeah. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Those two things. Please, are you hearing me that I tell you how, what a, what just <laughs> grade A, B, A you are? You get that? I hear you. It's really impressive. The work forward now, like we have to talk to some people like in, in the gym um, who work out too much, like professional athletes who work out too hard is I'm going to have to train you. I'm going to teach you how to rest, how to back it down. That's where you are. Is Yes, yeah, so that's like a therapist. Right? That's exactly right. And you have to be willing to do hard now. <laughs> that sounds so mean. I know, Maria. You're going to have to be willing to walk through some old memories that you've your body's protecting you from. You're going to have to walk through some real anger towards your dad and some real anger towards your mom, even though you love them. You're going to have to walk through some real forgiveness and peace for your 14, 15, 17, 22, 25-year-old self. Because that beautiful little girl was just trying to find connection, and I don't, I don't blame her for a second. She's a kid. And you're going to have to come to terms, own, if you will. You're going to have to own what happened to your little, little girl. Because that crap shouldn't happen either. You are brave and strong. And you've done all this work leading up to right now. And now's when you jump off the deep end with the help of a professional. And we're going to go get well. And in about six months, in about nine months, I want you to call me back. Because my guess is you're going to put on about four or five pounds of muscle. You're going to smile and you're going to be laughing and you're going to be saying, oh my, because you still got three kids under five. But it's going to be different air that you're breathing. So, so proud of you. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of On Your Past, Change Your Future. I want you to read it and internalize it. Even take it to the therapist with you and say it's time. We'll be right back. Have you ever thought about how a lot of us would drop anything to help somebody else, but we often don't give ourselves the same level of care? We spend time, energy, money on everyone else. 
But when it comes to making time for vacation, for exercise, for talking with a mentor, for sleep, even going to therapy, we don't do it. And we don't even realize it, we don't even think about it. You are worth it. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you are important, that you are worth being well, and therapy is a super important way you can show up for yourself. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't even have to see anyone on a camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Today, Dr. John Deloney Show listeners get 10% off their first month. So decide to invest in yourself. You are worth it. And go to betterhelp.com slash Deloney to get 10% off. That's betterhelp.com slash Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go to David in Richmond, Virginia. What's up, D-Money? Hey, what's going on, Dr. John? He's rocking on to the break of dawn, my brother. What's up? I hear you, man. Um... I'm trying to see if you can point me in the right direction of establishing some boundaries between work relationships and with my wife and just trying to find some direction, man. Um, so I work from home, I uh, run my own business and I feel that right now it's, kind of difficult because I am here all day long. My wife's a stay-at-home mom with our eight-month-old. So it's like I'm accessible, I'm available all the time, oh, but man, yeah. if I'm available all the time, I can't work and make money. <laughs> yeah. Can't make money, can't pay bills. Have you all so sat down? That's and kind I, of why I'm reaching out. No, it's, I mean, what you're experiencing, I've heard all over the country for the last, especially the last few years, man. And so, A, no, you're not alone. And B, no, there is some some pretty clear paths forward. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. have you had that conversation with her? Yes. How did, it didn't go well, huh? Uh, it really, uh, it really doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just, I sat down with her. I said, honey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to provide for the family. I'm trying to get us out of your parents' house. I'm trying to help, our future grow. You live with your parents? You live with your in-laws? Yeah. Oh, so boy. just a little uh, quick synopsis is I had a job opportunity in Florida. So I established a connection down there and I told this person, hey, you know, if everything is serious, then I'll pursue it. And he said, yep, everything's good. So I quit my job. I was running my side business. Um, and I quit my full-time job, sold the house. We planned to live with my in-laws for a month or so until we could find a place down there, move down there and start up down there. Well, he called me after I quit my job and said, Hey, uh, this opportunity has come and gone with another person filling that role. Oh man. Said, oh. All right. So oh, here man. we are. So you moved, how long have y'all been in your mother-in-law's house? Uh, we've been here since December, so four, five months. Is she pumping your wife full of, well, he should be, or, or is it a good place to be? It's, it's not a bad place to be. Um, there's some negativity just with their personality types. Um, well, just sleeping with I your don't... wife in her parents' house is weird, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it that's is. just strange. It is weird. Do you, um, do, um, do you have kids too? Yes. We have an eight month old. Oh my gosh. Okay. So tell me what an like what a normal. Well, let me back up. You had this conversation. You said, "Hey, I'm trying to. I, I need to put some put some boundaries around my work day." And she said, "No." Mm -hmm. She said, "No." Well, she said um, she told me I'm I'm trying to stay out of your hair. I'm trying to let you be out there, let you work. Um, I don't know if. The fact that I get up at four o'clock every morning and come out here and work before her and our daughter gets up. Um, if that's taking a toll on her, you know, not waking up beside her, that kind of stuff, I, I don't know. And then staying out here until five o'clock in the evening, I don't know if it's she just misses me throughout the day. Um, that'd be kind of cool. That, that'd be kind of cool if she did, right? Yeah. I mean, and it, it is. I, 
I think it's great that, you know, we have that connection where she does miss me throughout the day. So uh, I'm missing something but here. I'm, I'm missing something here. So is she mm-hmm. come out and bothering you or knocking on the door or interrupting you and saying, hey, I need you to c- cut the yard or, hey, can you watch the baby while I go do a thing? And you're in the middle of a project of some sort? Yeah, so it this is this is kind of how the daily routine goes. Um, it's pretty much down to a T. So I'll get up about 4 o'clock. I'll to go take a shower, come outside, go to work. Um, I'm working. What are you working 7 on? 30, 8 o'clock. I, I do welding and fabrication. Okay. So you're just cranking. So you're just you're just getting it done. I'm rolling. Okay. And about 7, 30, 8 o'clock, I go inside, help her get her daughter, get our daughter up. Um, and then, you know, I have me some breakfast and come back out. And that generally will run until about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Um, At night? About 10, 30. Uh, no, that's just the morning. Okay. 10.30, she'll come out here and visit me. Then I turn around, I'm back in at, you know, 12 o'clock eating lunch. And then she's out here multiple times throughout the day. And I'm just, I'm trying to find that balance of, hey, honey, let me work. Or, hey, honey, um, you know, I'm trying, I'm in the middle of something. I can't just stop what I'm doing and right. come inside for three hours at a time. I can't just, that's even right. though I'm self-employed. I can't just not work yeah. for an entire afternoon and go shopping with you. Right. You so, know, how, so how much of this do you feel guilt and how much of this do you feel is actual pressure? Um, I, as far as the pressure, what do you mean? Meaning if she swings by and says, Hey, do you want to come, you want to run to the grocery store with us? We're about to all go. You look around and you're covered in sweat. You got your face shield on. You're in the middle of bending something. And you're like, I mean, what about what's happening right now makes you think I want to go to the grocery store? And then you feel guilty. Like, well, I guess I should probably be going to the store. So, you know what I mean? How, how much of that is her just trying to reach out and be a human and you're taking on the burden of this versus her saying, you can never go with me. Why can't you ever go? You're just sitting here all day, right? Wh- wh- which one of these is, is the truth? Uh, for me, it's more, it's more the fact that I feel like I'm letting her down by not spending time with her and dedicating there you go. That, my, my work day to a job. This is, my guess is this is on you as much, if not more than is on her. And I don't say that in a negative way, just saying you've got, you're the one that's at home and you're struggling with being there and with holding boundaries. Yeah. So here's an easy thing right outside the studio door is a red light and there's a switch that goes right inside and they flip it whenever we're recording. So everybody knows not to come in here. Mm -hmm. I want you to go to Home Depot and you're handy enough. You can do this in 30 minutes and get a switch and a bulb and a red bulb and put on the outside of your shop. And when you go into work, I want you to flip it on and it's red. And I want you to sit down with her and say, when this red light's on, that means I'm unavailable. When it's off, then I'm working on something. I'm sitting down, I'm drawing up, I'm, I, I'm in a position where if you swing by, I can talk to you. And then I want you to begin drawing boundaries around your work day. Cause you're getting up at 4 a.m. You're working till nighttime and you're coming in at various moments here and there, which is confusing for everybody. I want you to have an on time and an off time. And when you're off at whatever time, be off at whatever time and then be fully present. Most families I'm talking to across the country are drowning from the toggling. I'm at home at the table, but I'm at work on my phone, right? I'm sitting in the kitchen while my wife's cooking, but my head is actually trying to solve a problem at work and she's talking and I'm only hearing half of what she's saying. And then she feels like I'm not paying attention to her. And then she internalizes that. And then she gets frustrated. And then I internalize that frustration and I get, see what I'm saying? It it becomes this gap. So keep these words in your mind, be wherever you are. When you're in the shop, turn it on and off. Give yourself a work day as though you are um, your own boss. You got to be in the shop running and gunning by 4.30. You get off at 7.30 for your first hour break. And you get an hour till 8.30. And then from 8.30 until noon, you're cranking for three and a half hours and you get from 12 to 1 off. And then you go until 6 or till 5 and then you're off. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then sit down with your wife and say, here's, these are going to be, this is going to be my schedule and own what you got to own and then let go of the other stuff. 
You see what I'm saying? You got to find some balance there. Unless you're in a yeah. season where you're starting your own business, you're trying to grind from scratch because somebody yanked the wool out from under you. And this is just a season of a six months or 18 months or two years where, man, it's 24-7, 365. I'm just trying to build a book of business and I'm going and I'm going and I'm going and I'm going. Is that where you are too? It, I, I'm in between okay. that phase right now. Um, I'm, I'm at a crossroads as well with my business. Okay. Um, between either, you know, taking it a hundred percent and just cranking this business up to what it can be mm -hmm. and, or going and getting a day job to be able to even qualify for a mortgage. Uh -huh. Um, because self-employment is two years of history and I'm not trying to live in my in-laws house for another year and a half. You can go rent a house just fine. Yeah. And that's the discussion that me and her have had and, you know, what kind of areas and stuff like that. And that's, that's the other part that I'm, I'm kind of struggling with is. Brother, but listen, don't overthink it. Just go run a house. It's not where you're going to live forever. Yeah. It's going to be for six months or it's going to be for a year or go get a two bedroom apartment, man. It's not your in-laws house. If you can yeah. afford it, go get it done. And well, what about the schools? And what about that? Man, you got an eight month old. Right. You'll figure out the, the, that's, that's why we tell people to rent. Cause you'll find out in short order, is this a community you want to live in? Or do you want to go find somewhere else to live further away, closer? And you know, off the top of your head, whether you want to run this business or you want to get a job, you know that. And I would tell you to quit Dyson either way. And like, I don't know, just jump in. And if it's going to be working on this business, get with a crew. I'll send you a couple of books real quick. Um, not real quick, but I'll send you a couple of books I want you to read. I'm going to send you Entree Leadership by Old Man by Dave Ramsey, and I'm going to send you Ken Coleman's book From Paycheck to Purpose. It's going to walk you through the, the blueprint for going to get a job in a strange city that you just, in a state that you just got dropped off in, and it's going to provide you a path towards running your own small business. Either way, you're going to have to have a roadmap, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide you with either roadmap, okay? But you just got to pull the trigger and go do it. When it comes to boundaries at home, go get a light and turn it on and off and be very clear. Here's my new work schedule. Type it out on a piece of paper, print it up, let her speak into it, and then let this be this. And there's going to be some, like, is he really serious about this? I don't know. What do you think? There's going to be some awkwardness and some, uh, I told you. That's fine. That's to be expected. But you're going to live by this work schedule, right? And then, man, guys, get your own place. It's time. Get your own place. We'll be right back. Y'all know there are lots of things that make me nuts, but one thing makes me more nuts than anything else, buying a home. And my friends who refinance their homes, they tell me it makes them nuts too. I love living in a new home, but I gotta be honest, I'm no good at buying one. And that's why I'm so thankful for people like my friends at Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is a Ramsey trusted provider who we've been sending people to for over 20 years to help with home mortgages. Why? because they're committed to doing what's right for you. And that means walking you through paperwork that's way over your head. That means making sure you get the right mortgage that you can pay off as soon as possible. And they don't try to upsell you a bunch of nonsense that's gonna hurt you down the road. And most importantly, when you're making this big life change, you can actually whew, breathe because you got an expert and a team who have your back. Listen, if you're about to buy a home and make a big change, Save yourself the headache and call Churchill Mortgage today at Triple Eight Loan Two Hundred. Trust me, that's Triple Eight Loan Two Hundred. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID One Five Nine One. NMLSConsumerAccess.org. Equal Housing Lender. Seventeen Forty Nine Mallory Lane, Suite One Hundred, Brentwood, Tennessee Three Seven Zero Two Seven. Programs are for select loan types only and are not available in all states or locations. All right, we're back. Let's go to. Uh, let's see here. Zach in Chi-Town, Chicago. What's up, Zach? Oh, not much. How are you doing today, Dr. John? We're just figuring it out, my brother. How can I help, man? I'm good. Well, I got a, I got an issue. I, well, I guess I don't know if it's an issue or not. Hopefully you can help me out with that. Go ahead. Um, so my mom, she's been married three times and she just can't seem to have a relationship that sticks. And she just goes from boyfriend to boyfriend. She don't even leave the one before she gets with the other. It's crazy. And I have a two-year-old, and 
she likes to spend time with my two year old, which is which is great. But the boyfriend is always around in some way. Either he lives there or nope. she has to do something. Nope. I'll but, solve that one for you. Answer is no. Uh, see, and I always, you know, I'm, I'm married, but I always heard, you know, like with divorces and stuff, you you should be uh, careful of bringing somebody yep. new around. I just didn't know, like, I just didn't know if it was a huge deal having someone, you know, because they just visit for a couple hours or yep. whatever. I didn't know nope. how to go about that. Super, <laughs> super direct. Sure. Yeah, man, the number of young women I've met with over the years, I, I can't even count. Mm -hmm. Mom's boyfriend, stepdad's girlfriend. Like the number of people who've had negative interactions there. I mean, I can't even count. So I don't know what the statistics on that is. I don't want to overstate it. But two things are sounding loud and clear to me. Number one, either you or your wife have some alarm bells going off. Listen to your gut. With your kind of comes to your kid, okay? Mm -hmm. Listen to your gut. Number two, it's as simple as, Mom, I love you so much. Anytime you want to come over here and be with the kid, that is great. I am overbearing when it comes to um, people that I don't know interacting with their child. And so I don't want her or him around any of your boyfriends. But honey, they're just my... No, I'm sorry, mom. I know. I know it's weird and I know it's a lot and it's probably me just being a first-time parent. That's fine. Um, but I don't want my baby around um, anybody that we don't know and that we're not comfortable with. If you date somebody for a long time and bring them around and I get to know them and our wife gets to know them and we both feel like that person's safe, then great. But that's our decision to make. And it could cause drama. It could cause... Oh, well, then fine. You're judging me. That's all. You can't control how mom's going to respond. What you can do is protect that baby little girl. And that's not a risk I'm willing to take. Okay. So you're saying just... Uh, <laughs> you sound disappointed, man. Now I'm, you know, <laughs> six months, a year down the road, whatever the case may be, then it might be okay. They might not be a bad guy. It's just we have no idea. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, it, it, like, it's not my right. job to filter through whether this... I'm just going to say I don't want this person in my kid's life. And given yeah. your, um, like your description of your mother's history there, yeah, I don't want that in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What, what is it about the boyfriends that makes you, makes you uneasy? There's something that's setting your alarms off. Uh, well, it's just every boyfriend she's had or husband, there's always been a problem. Her, her, her first husband was, was my dad, of course, and they divorced before I was even two. So I can't, I can't tell you what the problem was there, but her second husband uh, he was angry all the time, always yelling, throwing things, and just just crazy situations. And her third husband, same way. So it's just her judgment is always off. Can I ask you so a harder I, question? You know, I never know what she's going to bring home, so to speak. So to say she's never had good judgment, so I wouldn't expect the next one to have good judgment. Even though I don't even know who he is, I just I just got to expect it's probably going to be a problem. So can I, can I ask you a hard question? Mm -hmm. Does your baby need to be around your mom right now? You know, that's, that's a good question. It's not a good question. A that's a simple, boyfriend. that's a softball question. I'll, your probably, mom is the common denominator here. Figures her stuff out. That's right. That's right. And that's a really, really hard conversation. And I know that. Yeah. And I'm sorry that that's been dropped in your lap there because the picture of the perfect grandma that can come by and pick up the baby so we can, me and my wife can still go on dates. All that is so great, man. Or just dropping the kid off so I can go to Target real quick and Home Depot for a minute and clear my head. Man. And the Christmases and all, all those fantasy pictures are so good. It doesn't sound like your mom's a safe space for that baby girl right now. And it might be that grandma can see her granddaughter around you guys. Mm -hmm. When y'all are at, I mean, at your house, that sounds great. Um, and it might be that y'all have to set a broad boundary. Like we're not letting her go to anybody's house right now. We're, we're, we're kind of circling the wagons a little bit for a season. You're not going to let her come see your grandma? No, no, you can come over here and see her. That's fine. But we're going to keep her here. And that's going to impact you guys. It's going to be hard. Um, cause yeah. it's going to impact your dating life and it's going to impact your ability to run to the store and stuff. And your daughter's worth that. Is that fair? 
Yeah. I, yeah. You're very right. I hate that for you, man. Like just guy to guy. I hate that. And it, and it's just so tough because strange. my mom, literally, she bought a house, two houses down for me so she could be around. That's when she was a little more stable. And now I guess all this stuff going on in her life, she's, she's never even there. She just, Ran off to Tennessee with her new boyfriend this week. So, <laughs> and that's, hey, it's weird. It's your mom, dude. That's so weird. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you go back and listen to this call, you're talking about your mom as though you're 48 and it's your 22 year old daughter, which tells me you no, have that's been. What I feel like it, it is because you have been responsible for the emotional regulation of your mom your whole life, and that's not your job. Yeah. She's an adult. And you've been carrying it and carrying it and carrying it. And part, there's a little voice in the back. Number one, your wife sees it all. She sees it all, doesn't she? Oh, oh yeah. Yes. So you, part of this, maybe you sitting down with your wife saying, hey, you were super right. I'm sorry. Don't, please, don't, please don't bring this up in a future fight. I was wrong. And we're going to create some boundaries here. And they're your boundaries to create because it's your mom. Um, but there's part of your body that doesn't want your daughter having to carry the same load that you've had to carry. And so don't make her. And c- dude, I am not for one second minimizing this. I know how hard this will be. This will be the worst, the worst, the worst. But it's right. Right? Yeah, it is. I'll have some extra, um, I'll have some extra chips and queso for you, my brother. Because I know this, the whole thing will be hard. Maybe she'll sell the house and stay in Tennessee and make things easier, but probably not. Maybe Tennessee's a great place to be. You can load up the truck and move to Beverly, but man, I'm sorry. Two houses down. It's like the, it's like you're Ray Romano, man. Oh, geez. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Now that my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future is out in the wild, we've been hearing reviews and feedback from readers and wow, I'm so grateful. And one of the things I've been most excited about hearing is that this book is not just for people who are healing from terrible traumatic experience or other big scary things from their past. This book is for everyone in every walk of life. The single 30-year-old looking to sharpen their mind, the 25-year-old hoping to make new friends, the parent who's tired of seeing their kid's eyes glued to a screen but who doesn't know how to re-enter their life, people coming out of abusive relationships, everyone. And this book isn't me talking at you. This book is me walking with you because I've been there too. To better understand and improve your mental, relational, and emotional health, please check out Own Your Past, Change Your Future at johndeloney.com today. That's johndeloney.com today. All right, as we wrap up today's show, well done, Kelly and Jenna. Today's song of the day is the Fountains of Wayne Classic. <laughs> Stacy's mom. And it goes like this. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Stacy, can I come over after school? We can hang around by the pool. Did your mom get back from her business trip? Is she there? Is she trying to give me the slip? You know, I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now, baby. Can't you see? That Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want and I've waited for so long. Stacy, can't you see? You're not... You're just not the girl for me. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. It's got it going on. We'll see you soon. Peace out. Coming up on the next episode. My brother has used this opportunity to financially exploit my mother. Ah, gross. In her will, she has left him the only asset she has left, which is her uh, 120-acre farm. Why not you? The, bo- the boy gets the farm. What's the girl get? The plates? Uh, the girl gets the plates, yes. The girl gets the plates. Gosh! Why? It says, Annalise Boston dating mom's ex-boyfriend. Please tell me that's not right. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it is. Are you serious? What are you doing? What happened? <laughs>